Okay, going live, going live. Um, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to, we're live. We're live, yeah. I, yeah, we're live. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Conversations with the Designers. And today's episode, I have my guests this morning is uh, Grace Ling and uh, Stella, who, used, who was the host of our, let me just uh, show your, uh, so you zoomed in before we, and and then um, we will be, uh, yeah. So we will today. We're we're doing this. Okay. <laughs> Let me just. Uh, this is uh, conversations with designers. Ha! See that intro. <laughs> okay. So thanks, uh, Grace and uh, uh, Stella. Let's have uh let's can you tell us about your origin story how did you start in uh design and tell us tell us more about yourselves yeah starting with you grace yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Currently, I'm a designer at Electronic Arts full time, and I also run um, a 13,000 member Kimiko Design Buddies. And growing up, I was born and raised in San Jose, California, the right in the middle of Silicon Valley, surrounded by a ton of tech. And I never imagined myself working in design. Um, growing up, I've actually wanted to become an anime artist and a game designer because I really loved playing games. Um, however, my parents both have PhDs and they wanted me to go down that route as well um, in academia and doing research and all that. Um, and then actually in high school, I wanted to become an artist, but also a lifestyle blogger and an Olympic and a professional runner. Oh, really? Lifestyle, lifestyle blogger. blogger. Yeah. <laughs> so I've liked to tell all the stories on the internet um, since I was really young in high school. And I also ran cross country and track, was really competitive in it um, and had like big goals and running. However, in college, I came into college, my undergrad degree was starting in 2015. Um, that's when I graduated high school as well. I was studying bioengineering and I studied that because I was interested in learning how to biohack myself to run faster. And wow. I wanted to learn the ins and outs of the human body so I could alter myself just for running. Um, I was also in Silicon Valley, a lot of the kids wanted to become doctor, engineer, or lawyer. And I felt like that was like the only way to success. So that's what also influenced me to study bioengineering as well. And my goal starting college was actually become a neurosurgeon and get an MD, PhD. Um, and then I learned the hard way that I should never do something just for my resume. And when I was working in lab, I did research in gene therapy and I realized my favorite part was taking pictures of my cells with fluorescence and overlaying them in Photoshop. <laughs> I did not enjoy <laughs> anything else. And yeah, and that's when I knew, like I was, it was really hard to quit. Um, my professor was like, he noticed I was really, I got really excited um, when I was talking about games and he let me quit the lab and I was really happy. And I, and then I just, so just and then my junior happened. So I, I stayed in lab for two years. Um, my junior year of undergrad was in 2018. And there was this virtual reality lab that opened up my school. And that's when I learned that I'm not limited to my major because I watched a bunch of tutorials online to learn how to make a VR game. I was still majoring in bioengineering um, because I had to graduate in four years, so I couldn't change my major. Um, that's why I started making my own game and self-teaching myself and finding a community of other students to help me out um, because they were also interested in VR, but they uh, there's not professors or no classes that can really teach VR. Um, so we just kind of watch tutorials and teach each other VR and help each other out. We often stay in lab until like 3 a.m. every night and just like make games. I lived on campus, so it was super fun. We basically lived in lab. And that's how I made my first game. It's a biology inspired virtual reality role playing game where you become a cell in VR. And that's how I got wow. into game design and level design and ultimately UX. Because my favorite part of developing games was actually um, designing the levels and the user experience and the quests and like the steps they use, the experience the users when they go through the game. And, um, but I, I was also kind of confused 
of what I want to do exactly. So that game led to my internship at Intuitive Surgical last year. Um, so this was 2018, or oh, 2019, a year after I started VR. And I was a virtual reality robotic surgery game developer intern at Intuitive Surgical um, last summer. And I've learned, I basically made games to train surgeons to do surgery in VR. So really interested in just like VR game dev. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, so I did that. and. It was really fun, but I learned that I don't really like to code. Um, and I also continued with my master's last year. I graduated my undergrad in 2019. I continued with my master's degree in computer science and engineering because I thought I also was a little bit interested in software engineering and game dev. So I studied that, but halfway through my first quarter, I realized I don't want to do software engineering. I want to do this. <laughs> Change career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I recently changed, this is like the fourth time I ever changed my career. Um, but design is like the one I enjoy the most. Yeah. And I learned design just through the internet. I found like an online class and um, yeah, but my, my road to design was actually quite rough. Um, so at this time last year, around fall 2019, I had a lot of professors asking me what I was doing during, after, after undergrad. And I was like, I kind of want to do design or software engineering. And they're just like, your degree is in bioengineering, you should stay here. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. Like design, you shouldn't do design. Like you're doing everything wrong with your career. And these are professors <laughs> I kind of looked up to for years. Um, so yeah, I didn't really listen to them. I, I, I feel like when I, when people tell me no, it means a yes. So I just kept going. <laughs> and, Stubborn. And then, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so I, after um, a while of just like trying to learn design on my own and finding other design communities online, I felt like for me, um, the design communities I was in, I feel like it didn't really fit in because there wasn't any, like people kind of looked down on me because I didn't have a design degree. I was an engineer. Um, so that kind of later inspired me to create Design Buddies. And along the way, um, I was trying to get experience. I did a lot of volunteering work as well, um, interning at different startups, doing freelance work. And I did 10 hackathons along the way, um, like from 2020, like January 2020 to May 2020, before landing my internship at Electronic Arts as a UX design intern. Um, in April, I started Design Buddies because I realized that for me, I just want to make some design friends. I didn't really have any mentors in my real life that I could really ask questions. And um, and then now, eight months later, 13,000 people joined, which is kind of surprising because I just wanted to make an inclusive community where anybody can just ask questions and learn about design. Um, and yeah, we have we hosted like over 30 events, um, a lot of meetups, we have a mentorship program. Um, and yeah, so that's Design Buddies. I also run it on the side and then after interning at EA for six months, I took on a full-time offer and I studied my full-time job Woo! too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So now I'm on holiday break. So I just been, so right now I've been working at EA and doing design buddies. Well, I'm still a part-time grad student, um, taking one class a quarter while working full-time doing design buddies. So awesome. yeah, that's it right now. Thank awesome, you. Awesome, awesome, <laughs> nice, nice, wow. That was a full full story, and you're just how how yeah, you're still so young. Yeah, I just turned <laughs> you already have a full story. Yeah. <laughs> so let's. <laughs> how about you, Stella? Um, uh, what can you tell tell us about your your uh, journey so far in the design field and uh, you know volunteering in UX speech? Sure. Yeah. About yeah. The I origin think it's a Venn diagram for things that I could say and things that Grace has said. The only thing that I would have in common is probably, I don't really know what I want to do or I didn't really know what I wanted to do back then. So um, very different um, very different perspective from my end. Um, I come from a very large family, born in the UK, but um, raised in the Philippines. Um, a big family that's very much into show business here in the Philippines. So I grew up in that kind of environment where performance, being in front of a camera, um, that's that's a big part of our lives, no? And, um, naturally, being in that environment and growing up in that community kind of slowly paved me towards that specific inclination as a child. And I wanted to be a pop star. I wanted to be like some musician or a rock star or whatever. Um, but my parents are both designers. My dad's an architect and my mom is an interior designer. They work together. So um, opposing that side of show business was this strong um, exposure to design at such an early age. You know, I'd be six years old, we'd be traveling, and my dad would look at a building by Calatrava or something, and he would try to explain to me how the beams function, how all these specific things work. So from, from a very early age, there was always this 
sensitivity to design and the things that look good and the things that look nice, etc. So naturally, um, this led to my love for graphics, Photoshop, SketchUp, experimenting with all these different platforms on um, on this different software. And um, I did not actually know that UX was a possible career path until I finished university. So um, I studied, I moved to Spain. I studied there for four years. Learning a new language was um, an, an extremely insane experience. So I am now, yes, fluent in Spanish. Um, but uh, what's that? Sorry? Is, is, is it, uh, is it Cast Castellano or is it uh, Sp Spanish? Castellano, Castellano, huh? Yeah. Castellano. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So um, I moved to Spain, um, of course, because my parents, being the design um, obsessed people that they are, being in the middle of Europe, um, the study design was kind of like the goal, no? And um, so that was an amazing experience. Four years of just traveling around, visiting Milan for the yeah. design fairs, Madrid Design Week, um, bathing in all of these design experiences, no? Of, and it, it wasn't just UX design. This was like furniture design, fashion design, yep, um, yep, yep. Yep design, industrial design. It was really just that kind of insane exposure to all these different ideas and different things. And that kind of put me in a spot of like, I don't know what I want to do because everything is so cool. It's so interesting. There's so many interesting people in so many different fields. Um, um, but I finished service design. So naturally you can see how that pivoted into UX. Um, I finished service design um, earlier this year. I graduated in July. So um, pandemic baby, but um, um, Congratulations! I, Woo <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was rough, but you know, it was what it was. So, um, so anyway, what got me to UX primarily was my thesis. It was um, a study on studio cultures and design studios, essentially the environments that we design students work in. And I was just so interested in behaviors and how that affects space. So initially, I wanted to take this thesis coming from an architecture interior design perspective, having grown up in that in that environment. And naturally that was kind of the path my parents wanted, wanted to bring me towards, you know, like more of architecture, more of interior yeah. design. Yeah. And it was only while I was doing this thesis and as the pandemic happened and we lost access to the studio space and we started learning online that I started to analyze that shift, you no? Know? And suddenly there was no more discussion in interior spaces, but that of online spaces and communities and cultures that we build online, no? So that was kind of like this shift into understanding heuristics of UX, what are micro interactions that happen yeah. like online and stuff and diving into that research and into that um, literature. So um, suddenly I realized, oh my gosh, this is an actual profession. Like this is yeah. a career and I can pursue this. So um, I actually had done an, an internship, a UX internship, like, um, uh, two years ago with one of my professors, I was a part-time student. And um, I remember thinking to myself, that was a very interesting process, you know, journey mapping and that entire thing. So um, so anyway, fast forward, here I am. I wanted to find a way to really inject and imbue myself in that industry, um, you know, coming in from a very holistic, very general design perspective. And my first, um, my first thought was to connect with people in the environment that I'm in right now, which is the Philippines. I had to move back obviously because of the pandemic. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I can't just walk in the industry here and tell everyone, yes, I'm officially going to be a UX designer, like hello, without any understanding of what the community is like here. So um, mm. June, like, June to, to, to right now was really just me self-learning, putting up this portfolio, joining UXPH, local community that we have here in the Philippines, the largest, um, UX organization here, um, just connecting with people and really listening and just understanding what the space is like here. Because um, again, like if I wanted to talk about design, I come from a very, my, my exposure and my experience is very Western. It's, it's not based yeah. here. And I think like, you know, it, it would make no sense to want to enter in that industry and have no experience and no connection with what's really going on here. So that's why I'm currently pursuing an internship with um, a local UX consultancy, Quiddity. Um, it's a startup, so they've been operating for about five five years now. Um, so again, yes, just in that space of learning, um, learning, listening, trying to absorb as much information that I can about this environment. So I, I, I love how your your Stella, your family is. Uh, you're you're mixing your show show business your personality so you're able to do it here in UXBH and you're talking about design and your family your family your your mom is an interior designer your father is an architect and you are a, basically a service 
experienced designers. It's, it's a good discussion. It's a good experience. And then you're now learning about online experiences, which, uh, well, Grace is actually quite <laughs> an expert now because of her uh, community in uh, Design Buddies. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, very interesting. So tell me, tell me about um, the, the design, you know, volunteering for design, creating this community of design. Do you see this helping your your career or, or helping your 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 passion for design or do you think it will help or do you think it helps? Grace, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. And I feel like the best way to get good at design is to actually practice it because one of the things that I used to feel before is that oh, I have to like take this course or oh, I have to like read this book before I feel like I can design something, but Really, design is a mindset. It's about solving problems and really understanding users and aligning to business goals. And the best, way to get, the best way to get that experience is also like knowing some basic knowledge by reading, but mostly just getting experience. And when you're starting out, sometimes it's really hard to, especially in this day and age, finding like a paid opportunity. So for your first project, yeah. like maybe finding an unpaid one, it's still good because it's better than just like not doing anything. Um, yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. So for me, um, how I specifically start, I started my design journey exactly one year or about one year ago in October 2019. And I got I was able to get a full time job in, in design without any prior design degree or any background within about 14 months. So um, around this time, how I got in was actually all through mostly through volunteering opportunities. And that could be volunteering through startups and startups that I volunteered at was called Opal. Um, it's actually started by one of the, my friends um, in school growing up. And it's like a mentor mentee matching app. And I got to basically was one of the only few this first designer. So I got to determine a lot of the product strategy early on. Um, it was all volunteer though. And so, but I learned a lot along the way just by working with product managers, engineers, front end leadership to build an app or to design an app aligning to like business goals and doing some research. Um, I also did 10 hackathons and design challenges within five months. Wow. Um, all being a full-time student because I really want to get experience. So every time I find something online, I would just like um, ask some friends if they wanted to join me. And it was fun. Like I like won a few and it was great getting experience like working with people. And this is all volunteer. Um, I also did some freelance work for another startup called Virtually. They're like an online school that I got into Y Combinator, which is pretty cool as well. Um, and so that's basically what I did. Also a lot of networking, a lot of also just like putting myself out there, sharing my learnings on the internet, um, reaching out to people on LinkedIn, ultimately landing my internship. Um, and yeah, so that's how volunteering work ultimately gave me the experience and the education that it essentially replaced a design degree um, or yeah. design boot yeah. camp for me. It's again design without like spending zero dollars learning design. <laughs> No, so, actually, you, yeah. you were saying you you did ten hackathons. I did the same thing, basically. Me three oh, hackathons nice. in three months, but you did ten in, in three. Wow! Yeah, that, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, crazy. That's, that's that's crazy. Five months. Yeah. So it's it's pretty it's pretty that actually it's a great great experience going through all that, meeting all those people, getting a lot of um, feedback on your your work. It's great experience, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Thanks, uh, Grace. How about you, Stella? How's <laughs> what do you think about the uh, volunteer work? I think really echo what, what Grace said. No, like practicing design is the best way to learn it. Like you can read as much as you want to, and that's great. And you can have all this literature that you refer to in in your work and stuff. But it's not until you actually get down to do the entire design process that you understand those nuances that you actually read about. No, so I think to add on to what Grace said, because what she said was actually perfect. Um, um, one experience that I've had, obviously, um, learning a new language in a very Spanish university um, really forced me to listen. I mean, again, coming from a very, um, a very performance-driven environment in a family that is, you know, that that is in the showbiz community, kind of puts me put me put me sorry in that position where I have to be able to say something and I have to be able to say my piece in a very eloquent and a very proper way. And suddenly I'm in this environment where I can't even introduce myself properly in this language or be understood by people in this specific, you know, in this specific way. And that kind of put me in a position where I had to learn how to listen and absorb information in a way that, you know, that allowed me to just consume all this information and to listen, literally, per listen, period. So to add on to what Grace said, you know, um, there's so many resources, so many opportunities that um, one can take online. But listening, I think, and learning from those who have 
previously done these experiences. Like, I mean, even me listening to you, Grace, like I'm learning so much in just, yeah. in, in just this one sitting, right? Um, listening and, um, yeah, and taking all that information in, it seems like such a passive thing to do, but it's actually extremely active. And, you know, taking in that information, learning to process that and to apply that into what you're actually doing, I think is such um, an important thing. And I'm forever grateful for my fumbles of trying to learn this language. Like, I'm serious. In my first year, I could not even ask, like, for where the bathroom was. It was it was really a it was really a, an ego stripping experience. But but again, yeah, um, to add on to what you, you said. You could now, ask it in, in Spanish. <laughs> that, sorry? You could ask it in Spanish where the bathroom was. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't even order my food. It was just this stunning experience of like this is not what Duolingo prepared me for. <laughs> you know? So it was really just that experience of learning to sit down, to not try to dominate a conversation and really just shocks. Like I got to listen. And again, yeah. again, um, adding that to what Grace said, you know, practicing and listening, especially coming from a more junior perspective, me like, you know, coming into this industry, I think has been one of the most um important advice that I've received about how to pivot and how to shift, right? Um, to to listen. So yeah. Yeah. So actually apparently there are some people who are online. She is online. She she she, she, she just said it's Very great to tell hi to me. Hi. <laughs> um and uh, I should I should never do anything just for my resume reach. I think this oh, is yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nice. Hi Hi Chi. Thank you for listening and listening in. Yeah. So I guess uh, a couple of tell me tell me some stories about your 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 experience so far in in the design field or learning so far or how has design changed you so far? Uh, I know you're all still young relatively compared to me, but uh, uh, what have you learned so far um, in this field of design and even in volunteering in design? What have you learned so far? Grace, yeah. would you like to, to sit here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learned a lot about myself and just about how the world works and. Yeah, because before, I feel like I was really drawn to design because I really loved storytelling growing up um, and also visual design, drawing, and also solving problems from engineering. So I really felt like design was something that really integrated all my interests. And I learned that it's like the final career path I kind of want to go in. Like, I don't think I'm going to change like any time. Yeah. Um, finally, after like four different career path changes. And I learned that design community is actually the best out of all the other communities I've been in because in, in medicine and engineering people and also like sometimes in fine art like from my personal one person experience people were kind of like ego like full of like a lot of ego like if if yeah. I went, I used to go to engineering yeah. conferences and if I didn't yes. know some kind of like obscure theory they're like looking at me differently as if like I didn't know anything so yeah and I find that in design, a lot of people like design, you have to have like empathy, understanding the users Correct. and everything. So people are generally much nicer, much more empathetic. And that's why I really love design. Um, but my road to design was really rough because I had that professor telling me how I shouldn't do design, how I should stay in my lane. And like, I just, it was really, really random, but I was a grader. So I was in grad school and I was grader for the head of the bioengineering department at my school. Um, and he was just like this super accomplished, so many patents, someone, someone I used to look up to. Um, and he was telling me how his like 14 year old daughter does design, basically comparing myself to his 14 year old daughter and telling me uh, how I started too late. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and how uh, I should not do design and how design isn't for me and how I should stay in my lane and pursue bioengineering. Um, and yeah, I, I thought that was really weird. He spent like 45 yeah. minutes lecturing me about that. Um, but I don't know, it gave me a lot of energy to like prove him wrong. And so I worked even harder because I didn't appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I just kept going. Um, and But after finding some design communities online, I, I feel like I want to start my own because I feel like none of them were, when I first started out, were, I didn't really fit in because they're not really beginner friendly. I just kept yeah. going. Um, and yeah, that's how I basically started Design Buddies because I feel like I had that professor's telling no, and I had like a lot of, it fueled me to keep trying hard and reach out to people on the internet to find like mentors and stuff, which ultimately led to Design Buddies. Um, mm -hmm. Design Buddies has grown so much. Another fun story is that um, one of my, I shared a job posting in there um, posted by one of my teammates at Electronic Arts and one person from Design Buddies actually hired on my team. I thought that wow. was like super cool how I was able to like use Design Buddies. Not only, it just started as like an, a, 
a vehicle for me to just like make design friends and ultimately have people help people like find jobs, find communities, find resources. Um, like my two new team member at EA. So it's been super cool. Like um, just all because my professor and people told me I shouldn't do design. I also had other people in my life telling me how I shouldn't do design and killing my parents previously, um, how I'm like wasting my talent, how I should. Because both my parents, <laughs> yeah, both my parents at PhDs are like, oh my god, you're wasting your genes. Like, um, <laughs> like before, yeah. before, but not not like that anymore. My 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 dad's in Singapore, my mom's in Taiwan. They both immigrated to the U.S. to do PhD um, in computer engineering and educational leadership. So they really value education. Um, they thought I had like genes too, apparently. So yeah, <laughs> that, that. But ultimately, the stories of just like people telling me no, like, fueled my passion even harder to like harder to prove them wrong, and led me to where I am today. I I just wanted to echo what you said. Uh, I I've also noticed uh, some um, traditional design industries as well, or not just engineering. There are a lot, quite a bit of people who are snobs. Yes, who, and, and we try not to be like that at least in, in our community I've noticed. It, generally in, this, in the design communities I've noticed, uh, like yeah, design buddies and even in the UX page, the culture that we try to establish is be welcoming as much as possible, but be critical. So it's critical that you're teaching people, mm -hmm. uh, you're teaching them, but in a way that does not insult them <laughs> or does not uh, necessarily hurt their feelings, but just helping guide, I think it's a nice culture to have. Uh, mm -hmm. Stella, have you, have you, uh, Learned anything so far and uh, going volunteer and doing that hosting work, amazing hosting work, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Stella and uh, Rain did the uh, host the UX, the UXPH conference last month, and everybody was saying, uh, um, could everybody was saying hands down, Hoo -hoo! they're cheering you on. Uh, what have you learned so far, and what are you still learning? I guess, yeah. Yeah, no, thanks so much for that. That was honestly a really amazing experience. Um, echoing what, what Grace said, you know, about communities and how they really, um, how like um, design buddies and UXPH at least, I know are really trying to champion that inclusivity, um, you know, trying to be beginner friendly, trying to teach, like you said, Ellie, trying to teach without, you know, sounding too overbearing or condescending about, you know, this industry that is, especially here in the Philippines, still emerging. Um, I think my experience of volunteering with UXPH, what I mean thus far, you know, has really been an eye-opening experience. Just linking me up with people in the industry, um, it's it's free learning, honestly. Like you know, like people, like in casual, candid conversations, you learn so much about how um, how specific companies operate. Like someone will say a comment about their design process, and someone will plug in a UX meme, and you're like, oh, what does that actually mean? And you're like googling it on the side, and then suddenly you're in this spiral of medium articles about ux depth you know it's 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 a very ended way to learn ux or to learn the nuances of it at the very least um but maybe a funny story that i can share about you know thrusting myself into different ux design communities or design communities period because that's my experience really i mean um i really think it's about bringing people together and bring the right people together with a very specific mindset um one experience that I can bring up that's actually quite funny and kind of interesting is not UX related, but it was a design community. It was yeah. Design. Design is one of my favorite design journals um, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. ever, and they hosted their first ever um, Design Day um, in London, and I happened to be in the city at the time um, doing my internship there last year. And I went by myself. You know, it was like wow. this the lone wolf just kind of walking in this auditorium, and I picked this random seat. And this guy sat next to me and we just kind of started a conversation. I found that he spoke Spanish, so we were talking. And and he goes, oh, so what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm a design student, actually. I'm just here, I'm doing an internship, whatever. And and I throw the conversation back, uh, the, the question back to him. I'm like, how about you, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I design cars. And I'm like, oh, that's your wow. thing. And, and you know, I'm just trying to carry this conversation. You know, just a casual conversation. You know, I'm not honestly that invested in, in car design or automobile design or whatever, and I'm like, Oh, that's amazing. Oh, what, what project are you currently working on? And he's like, well, I mean, we're currently working with this one company to develop these hover taxis. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. So I'm, I'm realizing this is how serious and he is. And then he tells me, you can watch my Netflix documentary if you want to learn more about the car. Oh. <laughs> and I remember thinking, sure, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have a name or something? And I find out that sitting next to me is the creative director designer of Ferrari, McLaren, Frank Stephenson. 
you know? And, and I just remember sitting there, I think to myself, no, I'm sitting next to this guy in this. Anyway, the point I'm trying to get at is you just never know who you're going to meet in these communities. Yeah. Like, the, like what Grace said, you know, like um, she posted this job listing and, and one of her, one of the members at, uh, at Design Buddies got their next job in that environment. So you just, you kind of expose yourself to all these different walks of life, all these different people, and you just don't know who you're going to have a conversation with next. And what you learn from those casual conversations, you know, whether they're design related or, you know, workspace related, like you learn so much. It's so candid. So um, my experience with UXPH has really been bad. It's just very organic, you know, like us communicating on Slack, trying to figure out a specific yeah. thing, solve a specific yeah. problem. There's so much learning in that. So again, I can credit, I have to credit um, UXPH for, for easing me into the industry in such an inclusive manner, but also so open, open to sharing resources, open to, you know, giving um, advice, like, you know, big advice, small advice, whatever, like injecting me in random projects. So again, credit to UXPH for that and that community. So yeah. Okay. And I love where we're, we're, we have two two communities here that, that are in the West and the East, and we're, we're, we're starting to see similar things that are happening, and it's very nice. Okay, um, I know you you we need to end our stream because you all have <laughs> stuff stuff to work on. Uh, but I guess uh, just to end the last question for you, and I think oh Jordan just said hi. Jordan is also one of the core organizers of UX Philippines. Hi Jordan. Hi Jordan. Um, Hello. <laughs> He's in uh where are you in, he's in Europe right now. He's uh doing his PhD as well. So, you know, a lot of smart people here in uh um you in the design community. Um yeah, so I guess uh what are you, what's your basically advice for uh designers, budding designers, maybe tips, books or articles or resources that you rec recommend they take a look at. Uh, yeah, let's start. Yeah, go, Grace. Yeah, I would say also I, I have multiple tips, but yeah, um, like what Stella said, joining communities because it's like you become something bigger than yourself and you find you never know who you meet. You might find your next job. And I definitely yeah. learned so much about design just by starting design buddies. And I engage in discussions every single day about like salary negotiations, uh, workplace culture, remote working tips, and just things that I just like bump into organically that I never have thought of. So it really like expands my mind and also yeah. makes me feel like something bigger. So definitely get involved in design design communities like UXPH Design Buddies. Um, those are like um, two of the ones I mostly know. Um, and also another really important skill is being self-aware, like knowing what you're good at, knowing what you don't know, especially if you're a junior designer trying to break into industry or anybody as a designer, being self-aware. Um, just like making sure that you're really um, just like aware of what you know and what you don't, what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, especially like it kind of, like just right, right now, um, I always mentioned how sometimes designers have a lot of ego. I definitely feel like yeah. self-aware, being humble and being empathetic is super, super important to really understand your um, users and to succeed as a designer. Um, and also keep learning. There's always like, you never, you're never, you're always a student of life. There's always like new technologies, new ways of thinking, new discoveries in psychology, new trends in business that you always have to be aware of in order to keep designing like, the most optimal experiences. Um, and another tip I like to give everyone is, like oftentimes, like, especially for me coming from like an Asian background, um, a lot of like my parents and a lot of other people's parents that I know discourage like design or like any creative field. They want to go like science, engineering, medicine. There's no money like, there. <laughs> yeah, but it's not your job to please them. Like ultimately, as long as you find something that you like doing the most, you will do a much better job than something you don't enjoy doing. And ultimately it's your life to live. You don't have to please anybody. Um, and how I personally got my parents to be okay with it is that I tried engineering and I showed them I didn't like it. And now they're like pretty calm. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so I like that a day, like don't be afraid afraid to just like don't listen to people who tell you can't do something you know yourself best so if you like design go pursue design regardless of like what your parents or like what other professors in my experience say about it yeah. um yeah so that those are my tips how about you stella are your any learning tips so far to to budding designers yeah i think no if, if anyone needs advice it's definitely me honestly <laughs> i'm taking grace's tips down like yes yes <laughs> But just wanted to say that I super echo what you said about uh, parents. I, I remember um, like a few months ago when I was about to take this internship that I'm at right now, I had to sit my parents down, especially my dad, who's a more conservative, you know, architect, had to really explain to him that 
this is a profession, this is a career. Yeah. Like designing spaces, but online spaces. Yeah. You know? yes. <laughs> so again, what Grace said, um, you know, if you if you know that you want to pursue design, go for it. I feel that maybe in the Philippines there isn't enough um advocacy or exposure for what design actually is as an industry, Correct. what it can do. So I feel that, you know, what that's what I love about UXPH, that they really want they really want to advocate that idea that no, you can pursue this. There's an actual career in this. No, it's not a vocation. So um so that's why I love being part of UXPH because I, I want to emulate that message as well and everything that I do and to you know support people um to to, jo to join and hop in the industry. Um, but I think to add on to what Grace said, which was again a really perfect list of tips for budding designers. I think honestly, um, I, I would, I would, my, the advice I could give people is to enjoy design. Um, I feel that you know UX design is a very hyper focused area or part of design, but you know you've got so many aspects about it. Like you've got graphic design, you've got service design, product design, fashion design, furniture design, interior design, like all different types of designs that you can absorb and understand. Um, and really just enjoy and, and learn about. And, you know, I feel like, like what Grace said earlier, design is a lifestyle. And so, you know, understanding that it's, it can be more than just your career and more than just your profession, that it can be an approach to life of problem solving, of looking at things differently, of trying to find connections with specific things that you wouldn't otherwise see. Oh yes, this is my personal Instagram and visual journal. <laughs> Thanks for putting that up, Ellie. Um, but but yeah, uh, just really enjoying design and understanding that there's more to it than just the you know the wireframing and the prototyping that you can enjoy design as a as a lifestyle. So so yeah, this is okay. Yes, um, as we're going through this Instagram, this is kind of where I just document uh, my travels, books that I read, like little graphic work. Um, just kind of like the fun side of things, yeah. Just all right. So thank you, Grace. Thank you, Stella, for visit joining our session today. Uh, thank you for everybody who listened, uh, chatted, uh, Chi and Jordan, and we have uh, at least ten people who's watching the stream continuously. So thank you for people who are watching, and uh, thanks for watching our conversations for designers. We'll ha we'll hopefully have an more episodes for designers or people who want to learn. And I guess uh, last few parting words, um, Grace and Stella. Yeah, thank you, so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and make sure to join design communities and don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. Um, just pursue design if you want to. We should make a new hashtag, what Grace said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> How about you, Stella? Any parting words? Honestly, exactly what Grace said. Um, if anyone, if anyone watching right now is interested in joining a design community, especially UXPH, if you're based in the Philippines, go do it, go for it. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, put your foot out there. Especially even if you're not in the design in the design world, the best way to start is by doing just that. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And happy New Year. Would... <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. Yeah, well, almost happy right. new year. <laughs> yeah. So I'll end the stream. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, Grace. Bye, Ali.